But it ain't your boy Dell and I'm back with another video, y'all. And before we get into like whatever we about to get into, Michael Worldwide, the dark side of YouTube. Bro, I seen this nigga go to different hoods and do interviews. I just didn't know like what was going on, I guess, or whatever. So I'm gonna do a little something on it and I'm just gonna see what's going on. Let's see, yeah, let's just see what's happening. You gotta take off video down. I don't give a f take off down. And you're not allowed to come back to New York City, bro. Y'all New York, man. Y'all some man. I kill y'all, man. What's up? Pull up. We out here. We go worldwide. We go worldwide. Listen, I'm a grown ass man, and I can admit when I'm wrong. You know what I mean? I can apologize for my mistakes. I spread some false rumors about you, man. And uh, I know in the video I said that you forced yourself on a 15-year-old boy. And I was wrong. You know what I mean? And that wasn't true. Instead, you forced yourself on a 17-year-old boy. My bad. Next time, I'm going to make sure that I get the facts straight. YouTube has been on fire since China Mac addressed criminal allegations against another YouTuber by the name of Miko Worldwide. Based out of Georgia, Miko's YouTube career dates back to 2019 when he started vlogging in the Dominican Republic before traveling to other foreign locations such as Thailand, Germany, and Colombia. But his last trip to Colombia in 2020 would gain national attention. Miko was arrested by Colombia's CTI. YouTuber wanted by U.S. authorities for sexual crimes against minors. A law enforcement agency that partners with U.S. law enforcement when investigating, arresting, and deporting criminals. According to the CTI's website, Miko was located inside of a restaurant in Medellin, Colombia, and placed under the authority of migration, pending deportation back to the U.S. The CTI stated, according to reports from U.S. authorities, Miko offered drugs to a 10-year-old, sexually abused a minor, and tied his feet and arms before putting him in a car's trunk. The attack occurred in the state of Georgia in 2018, and for this fact, there is a conviction and an arrest warrant. The article also states in 2012, Miko was convicted for sexual crimes against another child under the age of 10 in Georgia. To evade the U.S., Miko left the country as a YouTuber, where he traveled the world and shared videos of his charitable works. At the time, he had just over 30,000 subscribers. Because of his arrest in a foreign country, different international authorities began investigating whether his YouTube channel was a facade to contact children and adolescents for sexual purposes. Back in 2018, an Atlanta-based news outlet posted an article titled, Wanted, Meth Trafficking, Assault Suspects Sought. Gwinnett County Sheriff's was seeking six men, one of which was Michael Wolfgang Nickel, aka Miko Worldwide, who was wanted on charges of aggravated sodomy and aggravated assault. Over the next two years, Miko allegedly went on the run internationally before being captured, deported, and transported to the Gwinnett County Jail. According to an arrest warrant, between March 29th and March 30th of 2018, between the hours of 9 p.m. and 5 a.m., Michael Wolfgang Nickel committed the act of aggravated assault and aggravated sodomy within room 236 at the in-town suites hotel. Michael Worldwide was accused of assaulting the victim with his hands by applying pressure to the victim's throat to choke him from behind while committing the act of aggravated sodomy. Nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, what the hell? Well, I believe the Colombian authorities made a mistake. The charge in the arrest warrant for sodomy states, aggravated sodomy with force and against person's will, or person less than 10 years of age. Nowhere in the actual warrant does it list the victim's age, but it does include the name. The warrant also doesn't include the co-defendant, who was the third person present in the hotel room that night. March 18th, 2018, Miko, who was 27 years old at the time, was hanging with a friend named Ishwa Long, who was 22. According to Miko, Ishwa was on a dating app called Jacked, 
which claim to be the most diverse community for gay, bi, trans, and queer people around the globe. In simpler terms, it was a Tinder app for the LGBTQ community. That's where a 17-year-old named Bryson Orr made contact with Ishwa with the intent of hooking up. Miko would drive with his friend to pick up the 17-year-old, and when he got in the car, Miko alleges he asked to be taken to Walmart. The three would enter the Walmart and Bryson would steal cough medicine before going into the bathroom where he ingested it. The cough medicine was known as triple C's and is commonly abused by teens to get a euphoric effect. The three drove to another location to buy marijuana before going to the hotel room that was under Ishwa's name. That's where Ishwa and Bryson smoked while Miko watched and according to Miko, Bryson started to twerk naked on the bed after. That's when the three of them engaged in consensual sex. After they did what they did, they noticed 17 year old Bryson was bleeding from his rectum. Bryson would clean himself in the shower before being driven home by Miko and Ishwa who knocked on the door of Bryson's home but nobody answered. Bryson decided to check his brother's car door which was unlocked so he sat in the car and waved Miko and Ishwa off. It wasn't until the next day when Bryson's mom returned home from an out of town business trip that Bryson claimed he'd been raped. He'd spent the morning in Bro, this is just like super like super weird like to react to, bro. Like y'all don't understand how I f how I, like <sighs> whoa. Afternoon with his brother, but failed to mention anything about an assault. That same day, the Swanee Police Department would respond to the hotel room, arresting 22-year-old Ishwa Long for aggravated sodomy. Police would arrive at Miko's parents' house next to which Miko fled out of the back of the home, evading a police pursuit that involved canines. Within a short amount of time, he was able to disconnect his phone, abandon his car, and quit his loss prevention job. When contacted by detectives, Miko claimed there had been a death in the family, and Miko would remain at large for the next two years until capture in March of 2020. Now the victim claimed to have a much different experience with Miko worldwide, than the one Miko would eventually share in his defense. It turns out that all three men had met a month prior to this incident and all three of them admitted to it. During that time they'd smoke and the victim gave oral sex to Miko which would be used in Miko's defense as a clear indication of consent in a previous interaction. But in this interaction, the victim claimed to have blacked out. He started off by saying it was Miko who contacted him through the dating app using a fake name and profile picture. He asked if he wanted to do meth to which he agreed. He admitted to stealing the cough medicine as Miko and Ishwa watched him take it in the bathroom. And when they got back to the hotel room, they asked him if he'd ever smoked angel dust. He was handed a blunt he believed contained marijuana, which caused him to lose consciousness. As he came in and out of consciousness, he realized he was being choked from behind and sodomized by Miko. Bleeding from his rectum, he was taken to the shower in the hotel room before being driven and left on the porch of his home as he was unable to walk. A medical examination would find a 3 centimeter anal tear within his body. Ishwa Long, Miko's co-defendant, would end up taking a plea deal in the case for a lesser charge of cruelty in which he admitted to throwing away the bloody sheets from the hotel room. The statement he gave the detectives would align with the statement given by the victim. The victim, who said he was raped, would say he required Miko and Ishwa to wear condoms, which shows initially he consented to sex. But what he... Hey. Want to know how I got this $50,000 check for an accident I was involved in over five months ago? Look. But what he didn't consent to was waking up only to be choked unconscious by Miko, who was penetrating him. With Miko in the county jail without bond, Miko's defense would file a motion for bond reconsideration. Initially, it was determined Miko posed a flight risk, as he'd obviously been captured in another country and the courts were aware of his YouTube channel. 
A fugitive report would state that after he was captured, Miko engaged in a physical altercation with Customs or an ICE official in Colombia, causing him to have to be removed from the plane that was extraditing him and resulting in Gwinnett County having to pay for a private plane to bring him to the U.S. During that flight, Miko would brag about his channel and his freedom while having warrants for his arrest, causing his bond to be denied. His defense would argue that Miko had been in jail for over six months without incident. Miko had been attacked by an inmate but did nothing to defend himself other than stopping the inmate from further harming him. His defense would say Miko fled the country in fear of punishment for the crime he was accused of, but he had no intention of fleeing again. His lawyer would also detail Miko's background. He'd worked for the past five years in retail loss prevention, a job based on identifying suspicious customers and preventing theft. Miko also had previous experience in law enforcement, but the lawyer obviously didn't want to bring up Miko's past arrest in which he was charged with impersonating an officer. Back in 2013, Miko was a part of a group causing a disturbance within a restaurant. When police responded, Miko identified himself as a police officer, but refused to provide identification. He further informed the officer he was post certified, which stands for Peace Officer Standards and Training. Post is a training program meant to raise the training level of law enforcement officers. Miko man, had... if y'all, man, this nigga stupid as fuck. I ain't okay. Nigga stupid as fuck. I don't know why y'all y'all used to invite this nigga to y'all hood. And he do little things, do weird shit to little kids and shit. 17 year old boys and shit. And bro, to the boy that knew what was going on, bro, that's weird as fuck. Bro, see y'all next video. Two nigga long little queasy. <laughs>